Guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at the sand waterfall tank, which unfortunately is one of the casualties of me being away and also falling victim to an empty CO2 tank while I was away. Um, whether or not we can fix this tank, or even if we will based on the situation of me having to move, this is definitely a tank that we will try and reset at the new place, but for the time being, it's just gonna have to exist as it is, which unfortunately is not in a very good state. If you guys have been following along, you know that I've been struggling with the Monte Carlo attaching to the Sirius Stone. It just hasn't really worked out, and that seems to me like a factor in its success. Like It needs to have good attachment to whatever surface it's on if it really wants to do that great, um, and that's at least my experience. So something that we're gonna work on when we reset this tank up in the new place, but until then, like I said, this tank is just kind of on standby. But the other thing, the main thing that I wanted to share with you guys today is the fact that the neon tetra population in this aquarium looks a lot less than the 80 fish that we at one point had in this aquarium. And so I was kind of perplexed by this. I was kind of just to the point where I was like, well, I guess, you know, we lost a lot of those new fish, which is not a super uncommon thing with neons especially, but they were doing well for the first couple of weeks, and in my experience with neons, if you're gonna lose them, you lose them pretty quick. So the disappearing numbers of fish in this tank kind of had me thinking. Now, there's no top on this aquarium. It's very high, but I swear to you guys that I've only found one fish on this carpet, okay? All the way around the tank, one fish the entire time that they've been in here for. Okay, I promise, and even behind the tank, I've looked. But what I found today shocked me, okay? I think I found the fish. Is my light not gonna work, really? They've been in fish prison. Look at this. There's a ton of fish down here. And it took me, I, I mean, I don't know how long these fish have been in here, but look, from the side here, you think I would have noticed this, but unless you directly shine a light onto it, you can't, you, you, you don't see this part of the tank. Like from back here, you don't, you don't see it. So we got, I mean, there must be at least 20 neons back here in this fish prison. There's a sponge down here, there could be some under that. I think I actually saw a couple over here in this chamber. Like, what the heck? The fact that they're not jumping out of here, but they're, I mean, they must be like slipping through the bars here. Like this is a legit prison cell that they that they climbed into right? and they haven't been able to get out. I'm sorry, this is super lame, but you guys get what I'm trying to say. I don't it's kind of weird. So, you'd think that this chamber wouldn't be accessible because of all the rocks and stuff. But what happened was they must have slipped in you know, when the water level's a little bit higher, they could slip in through here or they could just jump and then there is like a little hole back here. You can't really see that. I can't I can't really demonstrate it, but there's a little hole here where some water can slide through and I think they just eventually slipped through there into this back part and they've just been chilling. Cuz they can't go back for whatever reason. They can't swim against the current or they're not smart enough to figure out how to I mean, it's not like going over here would help them cuz then they'd have to jump back in the tank, but I don't know. I'm glad they're still alive. I'm gonna go grab the net. We're gonna scoop them out of there, try and get as many out as possible, and uh, and get them back in with their buds. All right, guys, so I pulled out 18 fish from the back filter portion of the tank, put them back into the main display, and lo and behold, two days later, there's fish back in the prison again, okay? Now, I pulled out all the pumps and everything, and that's why you see some water running back into here. That's obviously a point at which they could travel in, but I, I had a feeling that wasn't it, so I, I did a little more investigating over here, and I found out that this is probably how they were getting in. So right here, the main intake for this, the sump here in the back, whatever you wanna call it, this pad was pushed out. So there's definitely enough room for them to slip back in there and get into this portion. And then you guys can probably see this hole right here on the edge. I don't know if that's supposed to be there for like an overflow purpose or what, or if I made that when I was messing with the tank, but they're getting into here and then they're slipping through that little square into this more open space. So I gotta go fish them out again. We'll close up this portion of the filter. We'll put that pad right, right up against that so they can't get in there. And uh, that hopefully will fix it. Hopefully they'll, 
they'll stop going back there. I don't know what these fish are thinking guys, but I'm just glad they're alive and we can kind of move on. So with that being said, I think the sand waterfall tank here behind me is probably going to be one of the first tanks, or at least one of the first few tanks that we move to the new place. Okay, so the plan is I basically have to go and set up a tank at the new place, a holding tank for the fish. I'm going to take all the neons, take them over there, get them established in there, and then I'm probably going to take these guys, okay, the peacocks from the old moss ball tank, which is another tank that looks horrendous right now, and we're going to co-mingle those together, and then we're going to move these two tanks, okay, at the same time. And then what we're going to do specially for this tank is we're going to probably just do a dry start with some fresh Monte Carlo and see if that can get that plant established. If the dry start is successful, we'll know probably in the first couple of weeks and then we'll have to wait, you know, at least a month before I'm going to be filling that tank up. But we'll throw, you know, that'll be like a back burner project for us and we'll move on to escaping some of the more smaller tanks that we bring over and so like I said, the the 8.8 .8 gallon a uh, cube that had the peacock gudgeons will work on that one and then of course we're going to be working on Richard's tank right here and so I think that's going to be enough for just like the next few weeks um, but again we'll be documenting the whole process of moving each one of the tanks probably combine it into one video for you guys so you can get an idea of how I'm gonna do that I have a loose plan as of right now it might change a little bit I think it's gonna be kind of interesting just to see how the whole process goes we'll get a little taste of it with the first few tanks and if you're gonna be moving soon then you can get maybe some tips on how to move or you know on the other end of it like what not to do when you move tanks we'll just have to see you know what's gonna be really fun is moving this tank Okay, the 33, the four foot long nature aquarium with all the cherry barbs. This one has got me really, really nervous for a couple of reasons. I mean, one is like, I want to try and save this tank. I don't want to have to change the scape. I want to keep it going for as long as possible because that's kind of like part of the experiment. Okay, so I really want to preserve this, but I just don't know if it's even going to be possible because it's such a long tank. I mean, yeah, it is only a four foot tank, but it's not like it's, a three or a two foot tank, those those dimensions are a lot easier to move compared to this, all right? I mean, even with two people, if we drain this tank completely down, we get as much water out of it as possible, obviously all the livestock's out. Even, even if we do that, like there's so much substrate in here that's heavy, okay? I just don't even think, I don't even think it's gonna be safe, all right? Like and on top of that, because it's a rimless tank, we don't have a rim on the bottom to help you know, stabilize while we move and, and grab onto for that matter. Like it just, it's, I don't know. This might be like one of the last tanks that I moved just because I'm so nervous about it. I don't know. You guys have any, any advice? <laughs> like I've never had to move a tank like this, the distance that I'm having to move it. And it's just, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm tripping on it guys because I don't want to have to take it down. I don't want to scoop everything out and have to restart this because this tank is just, it's become my like zen garden in a lot of ways, you know? So I'm really nervous about that tank. I'm not really worried at all about the desert tank or the jungle tank here. They're, I mean, those are gonna be easy. Those are 30 inch tanks. They're gonna be not that hard to manage. I mean, I could probably do those by myself, even with them just drained and having all the hardscape in them. I'm not worried about those really at all. I think the uh, pufferfish tank behind me is going to get totally redone because it's just, I mean, how big is it? It's like 30 gallons, a 30 gallon cube, and there's a ton of dragonstone in there. It weighs a lot. There's no way I'm gonna be trying to move that even with you know a couple people helping with all that hardscape in there. So that's definitely a tank that's probably gonna get an ax, but you know, it's just gonna, it's gonna give us room to do more cool scapes. So, um, you're you're if you're bummed about that like just think how I feel man like It's good and bad the super blue dream flip aquatic sponsored tank is gonna be easy to move I'm not worried about that at all. I'm actually working on filming a different video about this tank right now Hopefully I should have that out to you guys pretty soon and uh, Yeah, check out these tiny little flowers on the red root floaters in the jungle tank Aren't those cool those are pretty sweet. I need to do another thinning of those. I was able to get the hair grass to come back a considerable amount. It got way more green 
than it was before. Gotten a little thicker, but not, you know, not a crazy amount. And that was because I, I scooped a ton of this stuff out. Whoa, dude, what are you doing? That was crazy. Get in there. He didn't jump out, did he? No, we're good, we're good. That was <laughs> super funny. I think that's a sign I need to feed this tank a little bit more. We'll do that after the video, but uh, all these little tanks that we have here, no big deal. Don't even really need to talk about those. Those are gonna be super easy. What up, Richard? How you doing, man? Guys, if you didn't see the last video about Richard and him going blind, make sure you check the description and watch that video. I don't know what's going on with notifications, but they're definitely not going out to people, so. Make sure you're subscribed right now. Check right now, make sure you're subbed and the little bell is clicked. Sometimes, even if you have notifications turned on, you'll stop getting the notifications because if you go a long enough period without clicking a notification, then YouTube will basically like unsub you from that notification. It's super dumb. So make sure you got that checked and if it is checked and you're not, you haven't been getting the notifications, uncheck it and then check it again and maybe that'll work. And guys, I'm out here standing in front of the 125. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about this tank, why you haven't seen it in pretty much a year. This is why. Okay, that's why. The 125 will be making a comeback in the new place. That's all I'm gonna say. All right guys, I think that's gonna do it for today's video. There's not a ton else going on, but I just wanted to give you a little update on kind of the moving progress, I guess, that I haven't really made. I've, I've only been talking about it, but this weekend I'm going to be making some moves and filming some stuff, so hopefully I can get that out to you guys as soon as possible and you can get a taste for like what's really going to be happening here. We can get down in that space, kind of plan out maybe um, a little bit more detail, like where certain tanks are going to go and stuff like that, so I'm excited for that. Uh, wish me luck. I'm crossing my fingers on the first kind of move of the first couple of tanks and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Thanks for hanging out with me and watching this video, being part of the journey. Special thanks to all the people on Patreon that decided to want to help me out, um, you know, specifically for the move and for the future of this channel. It means a lot, guys. Thank you so much. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and let me know what you think about what you saw in today's video. Appreciate it so much, guys. We will see you in the next one.